in this problem, we're going to have a block located okay, right here on the surface or the top of the surface of a of an inclined ramp. This ramp will have a certain height off the ground at one end, and it makes an angle theta with the ground, which is assumed to be horizontal. So if the block starts from up here, we know that it's going to slide down, and if this is a frictionless ramp, the block will accelerate. And if it's starting from rest, how quickly will it accelerate down the ramp, or what, what would be the acceleration as it goes down the ramp? It's easiest to envision the block by itself and use Newton's laws to describe its motion. In other words, let's set aside the, the existence of the ramp for just a moment. And we're just going to draw a block out there in empty space. Now I'm going to draw a dotted line right here, which reminds us of where the ramp is. But I'm putting it in parentheses because we're just going to focus on the block. Newton's laws encourage us to think about the net force acting on an object and then using that to predict its acceleration. Well, let's write down what all the forces are. There are two that we know of. One is gravity pulling this thing down in the first place. It pulls down in the vertical direction toward the center of the Earth. And I'm drawing that, that arrow in blue straight down. The second force acting on the block is that which we call the normal force. It's the push upward from the surface of the ramp. And we said that the ramp always pushes in a perpendicular direction to the, to the surface of the ramp. So this has to be 90 degrees. Now it's useful to draw a coordinate system in this. So I'm going to draw an xy coordinate system where y, right here, will be perpendicular to the surface of the ramp. And we talked about that, why that's useful to, to do that, because we know that the object is going to stay on the ramp, which means that in this direction, the object cannot accelerate. The other co coordinate here is the x direction, and this is where all the action is happening. So Newton's laws encourage us to write down the sum of the forces in the y direction and the sum of the forces in the x direction and set those equal to accelerate mass times acceleration. Well, I need to think about what are all the forces in the y direction or the components of those forces. And to do that, I need to remember that gravity doesn't exactly point in either the x or the y direction. It points like so. So in my coordinate system, it has a x component, and it has a y component. If I wanted to calculate the y component, it's this length right here, or that length right there. So if this is mg, and that forms the hypotenuse of a triangle, then this is mg cosine theta because the angle between those two vectors is theta right here. Many of you will wonder why that's not 90 minus theta and I return us back to our picture with the inclined plane. Theta is the angle off the horizontal of the ramp. If this was zero, the ramp would be a flat table and so would this be zero. So this is not 90 minus theta, but rather theta. So the component of gra the gravitational force vector that's in the y direction is mg cosine theta. Actually, that's a negative number because it's pointing in the negative y direction. Positive y points up, like so. Negative y points down. So when I sum all the forces in the y direction, that would be n in the positive direction minus mg cosine theta. And that has to equal mass times acceleration in the y direction. Remember acceleration is a vector too, and it has an x and a y component. And since we're solving Newton's laws in the x and the y direction separately, because this is a vector equation, 
we say this is m times a sub y. Well, a sub y has to be zero because the object isn't accelerating in the y direction. In other words, it stays on the inclined plane. It doesn't leave the surface. And if that's the case, then we have our first expression, that the normal force is equal to mg cosine theta. Remember before I said that we had a value n equals mg, and I said that was not a general result, but only one that held true for the particular problem we were solving. Here we see a different value. We can again solve Newton's laws, but in the x direction. And we need to remember that there are vectors pointing in the x direction. If gravity points in this funny direction uh, down, which is not in either the x or the y direction, then if this is mg cosine theta, then this side of the triangle, which is a 90 degree, a 90 degree triangle, or right triangle, this component is mg sine theta. So when I write Newton's laws in the x direction, the sum of the forces in the x direction has to equal mass times a sub x. Well, there's only one force in the x direction, and that's mg sine theta. Or it's the component of the gravitational force in the, in the x direction. And that gives me a la my last expression, because if I notice here, m cancels on both sides of this expression. So I just have g sine theta is equal to the acceleration component in the x direction. So those are my two big results, number one and number two. We should check if these make sense. One way to check our answers is to make sure that they make sense in various extreme cases. So let's try one particular extreme case where the angle theta is zero. That essentially corresponds to a block that's not sitting on an inclined plane, but rather a horizontal table. If I look back in those two expressions for the normal force magnitude and the acceleration, I get, by plugging in theta is zero degrees, then the sine of theta is zero, and a sub x is equal to zero. Also, the cosine of zero degrees is equal to one, and I get n equals mg. So those are my two answers. And that makes sense because on a horizontal table, if an object starts out at rest, well, it's, it's going to have a zero acceleration. It's not going to change in speed. And the normal force should just point straight up and counteract gravity, which is pointing straight down. And I get n equals mg in the case of the vase sitting on a table. The other extreme case we can think about is the case when theta is 90 degrees. In that case, the inclined plane is not an inclined plane so much as it's a block falling down next to the vertical wall of a building. If I plug in 90 degrees into the two expressions, I get a sub x is equal to g. In other words, it's in free fall, and that's about right. That makes sense. Uh, if I turn this inclined plane up on its side, the, the block falls away, and I, the, object is in, the block is just in free fall down toward the ground. The other expression I get when I put in 90 degrees and the cosine of theta is zero, and I get the normal force is zero, which means that there's no force away from the, the wall, from, from the wall itself. And that makes sense because the block just thinks it's in free fall. So this checks out nicely as well. And we were able to just confirm that our answers are sensible. And we don't know that they're absolutely right, but they know, we know that they're sensible by looking at these extreme cases.